Hey students, namaste to all of you and welcome to the next video of our Bio Bites in 15 minutes series for ICSE class 10. And this is Ambika, your biology master teacher right here on the super amazing platform of Vedantu. Well guys, today we are going to be discussing another seemingly very complex concept which is the process of photosynthesis in just a few minutes okay so uh, let's get started without wasting any time as uh, true to its name biobytes is meant to be a very short and crisp video right so for those of you who want a detailed explanation of the process of photosynthesis please check out our main playlist we've done all this well in detail quite a few uh, weeks ago so have a look at that and definitely you will be able to understand this better. But then this session, this particular video is going to help you, especially if you're looking at something very, very quick to revise. All right. So let's get started with a positive quote. Do not ever let anyone make you feel like you don't matter, as Michelle Obama said. Right. It actually completely makes sense because just understand and have complete faith in yourselves. That's all that matters. Okay. Right. And children, uh, to check out the details of the amazing courses that Vedantu has to offer you, please check out the link in the description box below and the pinned comment. And you can also apply the coupon code, which is AMBPRO, to avail the best benefits of all that uh, we have to offer you there. Okay. To avail the best, uh, avail these courses at the best rates. All right. So, um, also, for those of you NTSE Stage 2 aspirants, I have again um, good news for you all. In case you have missed any of our previous messages, um, Vedantu launches NTSE Stage 2 courses. In fact, uh, this has already started on the 17th of December 2020 and this will go on till the 13th of Feb 2021, Monday through Saturday. So start preparing early, as early as possible, which is right now without wasting any time. The link that you would want to click on to register is given in the description box below so click on it and be a part of our amazing sessions okay ntse experts will be there to guide you all throughout so yes children photosynthesis what are the raw materials we need carbon dioxide which you obtain which the plants obtain from the atmosphere water which the plants obtain from the soil through the roots and the chemical reaction of photosynthesis is given right here 6 CO2 plus 12 H2O in the presence of light energy and chlorophyll would give you one molecule of glucose, six water molecules and oxygen, six molecules of oxygen would be given out as a byproduct. Okay, so this is what photosynthesis is about. And where does it occur? It occurs in the chloroplast of the mesophyll cells, right? So Inside the chloroplast, there are several parts, of course, just like any other organelle of a plant cell. Inside the chloroplast, the two major parts you need to know to understand the process of photosynthesis well in detail would be thylakoid and stroma. Phase 1 of photosynthesis occurs in the thylakoid. Phase 2 of photosynthesis occurs in the stroma. Okay. So here it is, light dependent phase and light independent phase as we call them. Light dependent phase, true to its name, is totally dependent on sunlight. So we also call it photochemical phase, okay, or light reactions as well. This occurs in the thylakoids or the thylakoid membrane to be specific because that is where chlorophyll molecules are concentrated. All right. So this is it. The thylakoids just shown to you in a vertical mode. Compared to this, it's just turned around, rotated this way and shown to you in this manner. <coughs> okay. So the very first step of light reaction would be activation of chlorophyll. Imagine this is one individual thylakoid um, on the membrane of which are several chlorophyll molecules. It starts with getting exposed to sunlight. When this happens, chlorophyll molecules get activated which means the electrons get excited. This is what happens first. Step two is what happens next. What happens is the absorbed energy, which means the energy which has been absorbed from the sun, from uh, the solar energy is used somewhere, right? It is used in splitting water molecules into its components. What are they? H plus electrons and oxygen. 
okay so children just keep in mind that electrons of the chlorophyll get excited and this excited these excited electrons have to spend their energy somewhere only then they are going to be coming back to a normal state so just like excited kids bouncing around um, jumping around not knowing what to do these excited electrons also use their energy in a useful place and that is in splitting water molecules the water which has been taken in by the plant from the soil so this is what occurs splitting of water in the presence of light we call it photolysis it splits it up into these components once again four h plus four electrons and oxygen okay so this is what occurs and what happens to all of these three uh, product 1 product 2 and product 3 of course each of the each of these have got their individual fates hydrogen ions which are formed at the end of photolysis are picked up by nadp to form nadph so all these three actually are picked up by different individuals just like uh, three different passengers who are arriving at the airport and three different people who are coming to pick them up to their respective destinations okay so nadp is picking up <coughs> sorry h plus ions to form nadph <coughs> oxygen actually is just given out of the stomata as molecular oxygen this is the oxygen that is the life sustaining gas that we all breathe okay and what about the electrons electrons are used somewhere they are used to convert adp to atp by adding one phosphate so adp plus inorganic phosphate to give rise to atp B. This is called phosphorylation and since it occurs in the presence of light, we call it photophosphorylation, okay? That is where for this reaction, the electrons are used, okay? Now, what happens to the NADPH and the ATP? That is the next question. Anyway, this marks the end of the light-dependent reactions which have been occurring in the thylakoids. All right, now we move on to the light independent phase or the dark reaction. We also call it the biosynthetic phase because this is the phase where the end product of photosynthesis, which is glucose, gets formed. Okay, children. So now I have told you that ATP is formed and NADPH is formed. They leave the thylakoids and they go out into the stroma of the chloroplast remember i told you you must know what the stroma is also okay so if this is the chloroplast okay the double membraned one i know that's not the perfect one but anyway just a rough diagram for you to know okay so until now the reactions were occurring in the thylakoids now we are talking about this space which is the stroma okay this individual matrix is called the stroma so the NADPH and the ATP move out of the thylakoid into the stroma and there they carry out further reactions. In the sense, NADPH breaks down into NADP and H+. Okay, And that H+, what happens to it? It combines with, with the atmospheric carbon dioxide, which means six molecules of carbon dioxide, which are used up to form one molecule of glucose so this hydrogen along with the six molecules of carbon dioxide would help in the formation of the final product of photosynthesis which is glucose c6h12o6 and what happens to this nadp nadp gets recycled because in further light reactions it has to be used up so it gets recycled further for further light reactions okay now coming to atp what happens to the atp atp now after it enters into the stroma it gets split up again into inorganic phosphate and adp okay it also releases electrons there because this process would release energy okay this is what it is super important in always remember atp is a molecule which is high in energy Okay, very, very highly energetic molecule. NADPH also has energy up to a certain extent. Okay, so this is what happens. ATP gets broken down to release energy, which is used up in this particular process, which is formation of glucose. And the ADP and inorganic phosphate are recycled back 
so that they can be used again in further rounds of light reaction. So there we go. That brings us to the end of the light independent phase or the biosynthetic phase or the dark reactions. Okay, dark reaction. But do not get carried away by the word dark. Uh, it doesn't occur in darkness. It also occurs simultaneously with the light reactions. It's called dark reaction only because it is not directly dependent on light. That's it. Okay. Now what happens to the glucose? It um, doesn't stay as such. Part of it gets utilized and most of it gets converted in the form of starch and it's stored in the form of starch. Okay, so this is it. The entire process of photosynthesis at one glance for you. The dark reaction um, is what you see here. It's also called the Calvin cycle. Okay, light reactions once again occurring in the thylakoids starting with uh, the uptake of light energy. Uh, water molecules are split up to form oxygen, photons and electrons. Oxygen is given out as a byproduct um, and the hydrogen is used up by NADP to form NADPH. The uh, electrons are used to add ADP and inorganic phosphate to form ATP and both of them mark the end products of light reaction and they enter into the stroma and enter into the Calvin cycle or the, the dark reaction. All right. So this is what happens here. NADPH splits up into NADP and H+. H+, combines with carbon dioxide to form glucose and, aid, uh, and the NADP gets recycled back for further light reactions. ATP gets split up to release energy to be used up in this process and ADP and inorganic phosphate would be recycled for further light reactions. That's it. Isn't that simple? Did you ever imagine that the process of photosynthesis could be so simple? Yes, guys. So here we go. Photosynthesis occurs in mesophyll cells, both palisade and spongy mesophyll cells. Carbon dioxide, water and sunlight act as raw materials for photosynthesis. And then carbon dioxide from the atmosphere enters the leaf by diffusion through stomata. And then water is taken up by the roots, sent to the leaves, later redistributed in the mesophyll cells. Okay, glucose is a product of photosynthesis. It is soluble in water. So remember, it is almost immediately, glucose is almost immediately converted to starch. Okay, to be stored in the form of starch. The light dependent phase occurs in the thylakoids. The light independent phase occurs in the stroma. That's about it. You are done learning a very, very seemingly complex concept. So children, if you have enjoyed this video, please click on the like button right now and let us know your feedback in the comment section below. And I would sincerely request, please do share it with all your class 10 ICSE friends and also any of your neat aspirants who are also in CBSE. So that doesn't matter because this will certainly help all of them learn the light and dark reactions in just one single shot. Okay. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet, because apart from this, we keep doing a lot of amazing and interesting series to make your learning journey a lot smoother than you ever thought. Right, children? And also you can follow me on Instagram, Ambika underscore Vedantu, where we keep posting a lot of useful stuff for you. Please check out on those as well. And I'll see you in yet another amazing session. Until we meet again, take care, stay home, stay happy, stay healthy. That is all that matters. Bye-bye.